we have unlimited growth ahead of us because we're never going to make all the things we want and stop. Because who would have thought that the biggest growth industry now is wellness? What's wellness? It's sickness for people who aren't sick, or it's medicine to keep you from getting sick or to slow down your aging process. And I go on and on about whole new industries that create demand the moment they're invented. The growth in our economy occurs when people who do a job are thrown out of work, but the output of their job stays. And real growth occurs when that unemployed person finds a new job. The hottest new technology is usually on the desk of the individual entrepreneur sitting home. The greatest fortunes in new industries for the next decade are in industries that almost don't exist today. One of the greatest industries I've been writing quite a bit now and have a new best-selling book out on is the wellness industry. Who ever heard of a medical industry that doesn't treat sick people? It's for people who are well, <laughs> who want to stay well or slow down the aging process or keep from becoming customers of the sickness business. And in the U.S. and Canada, wellness, which showed up in the last decade due to new technology, like new vitamin supplements, Viagra, and all these new products coming out that slow down aging process, has instantly become a $200 billion business. I'm projecting that the wellness industry will reach a $1 trillion level in the next decade. The final and sixth law of alchemy is if technology determines everything, if W equals P times T and technology determines the supply of wealth, and if technology determines demand by what's being invented, how do you get a handle on what's coming next within any field? You can increase the T of your business, not the P. And you need to start thinking about your existing distributors, contacts as your P, your physical resources. Or let's get more personal. To you individually, your P, your W equals P times T, your physical resources. My P is how much time you have free during the day and how much people you know and all the physical things. Now what's important? Now what's important is your T because your wealth will equal your physical resources, the P I just went through, times technology, what you do with them. So your technology so far includes your generic skills, read, write, and calculate, and speak, your generic skill, your functional skills, what you've learned to date, what you've already done, and most important, your technology includes your ability or speed with which you learn new things. So the new distribution billionaires almost across the board, and there's so much more of this in my books and research, are people who distribute products to consumers that consumers don't want, that know they want. They're really what I call an intellectual distribution. Distribution is two businesses. Physical distribution, distributing physically the product to the consumer they know they want. Intellectual distribution is distributing information to a consumer about a product that the consumer didn't know he wanted, but when he hears about it, he or she wants to buy it. And intellectual distribution is really the key in a great way for the future. Well, give me a rule. I'm working every day at this company, or I'm trying to recruit this person from this company to join my business. How did I know when it was time to move? And how do I tell people when it's time to switch careers? I call it my 51% rule. You should be in a business where 51% of your day is learning new things, improving your skills, and 49% is just the grunt work of some boring thing you know how to do and you just did it. And when you cross that line, when 51% of your workday no longer is learning. When 49% is learning and 51% is doing, time to move on. Because it's probably an indicator that what you're doing is old and it's going to go out of business anyway.